carrying the torch from the heart? Well, it means being available, uh, being, being willing to educate, and uh, being able to help out your fellow Chumash or anybody, I don't care who it is. Paku, Kakti Ernestine. Um, I'm uh, one quarter Chumash from my mother, Mary J. Yee, uh, family Ignacio. Um, and I've been here since I was two years old. I'm 74 now. My mother didn't make a big deal of it, but she didn't go hiding. And no, we weren't born in a cave, so nobody knew. She was fortunate to be raised in the old way when you're raised by grandparents. And so when she was raising me, she didn't emphasize, you know, that you're a Chumash, you will live as a Chumash and do as a Chumash. No, she did with Catholicism. No. <laughs> I did have an uncle who was buried here. He was full blood, and he loved me, but we didn't communicate because I was little and he was uh, in his 80s, and uh, he spoke mainly Chumash. I asked my mother one time to teach me how to speak Chumash because she said to me one time, uh, and I said, oh, and I could, of course, couldn't follow that. When I asked her what it meant, she said, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> That's what it means, I'm sure. <laughs> and she, would, she also had the same sense of humor. That's where I got it. Um, she would tell me all the stories of what she was raised uh, as, and, and that's how my upbringing was in uh, my household. All of us, actually, we were brought up, uh, I guess, I have to flash back and forth between religion because that's a way to identify. Um, I was raised according to parables, you know, not parables, well, parables of the Bible, but mainly of uh, my culture, and it all worked out because it was all so true. Bad associates were associated with stories of bad uh, associates in the animal world because that's what they thought of, you know, animals being the first people. And so all the stories were like what you see in kitty books, but it wasn't a kitty story. We were here first. And yes, we're 13,000 year old squatters, but that beats the heck out of what's come in here and destroyed this land. Get back to the basics, because that's why we and the entire world is going down the toilet. Oh, my mother's going to turn over at her grave because I never listened to her. But now I quote her everywhere I go. Because I remember those stories now. They're as vivid as anything. But when I was a young person and a teenager, to heck with those stories. I was going to do what I was going to do. My mother was my hero, my best friend, and the best mother and nurse you could think of. She came up with remedies that uh, nobody else came up with. But I was in the middle of my nursing career, and I saw that they had an infirmary here, and I was about ready for a change. I ended up. Uh, getting a job here and uh, from then it took off. I fell in love with the guys here. Lo and behold, be careful what you ask for. I ended up with, I forgot, I think I had 14 or something like that in the infirmary. Oh, they were all retired friars. They were Franciscan brothers and priests and little misfits. Come on, I'm new, I'm terrified, you know, I'm going to be taking care of priests and bro oh my god, you know. And he looks at me like this, and I'm in there trying to get adjusted to them. And so I'm feeding. They said, well, help whoever doesn't, isn't able to feed themselves. So here I am feeding him. And he's letting me feed him and going on and on. Then at the end, he, he looks at me, and I, I turn around, and I'm doing something, and he's feeding himself. Oh. <laughs> I said, you rascal. You can't let